sure, guys, this is a very great news for you on how Abakayari played on Oshibajo's integrity and also manipulated Buhari to sack Oshibajo from Ruga Project. Hear the full gist. How Abakayari manipulated Buhari to sack Oshibajo from Ruga Settlement. When Vice President Yemi Oshibajo wrote to President Muhammad Buhari seeking approval for funds to continue his role in resolving the deadly farmers earthmen conflicts earlier this year, he did so with little awareness that a middleman would intercept it, moderate it, and ultimately discard his role altogether. Yet, that was exactly what transpired after Mr. Oshibajo pushed a memo to Mr. Buhari earlier this year that was subsequently undermined by Aba Kayari, the President Chief of Staff. After successfully rubbishing Mr. Oshibajo's request to Mr. Buhari, Mr. Kayari went on to instigate the President to sack Mr. Oshibajo from his role as the head of a committee that was raised to resolve the perennial violence between farmers and headsmen. Premium Time can report based on the official documents and interview with people familiar with the torso for influence at the presidential villa. The exclusive documents in our possession provide a real glimpse into the emulation Mr. Oshibajo is facing at the time speculations are rifled nationwide about how poorly the vice president was being treated by the president's senior hates and helis. A request was made. The documents showed Mr. Oshibajo sought the president's approval for three proposals relating to the development of the National Livestock Transformation Plan. The National Livestock Transformation Plan, NLTP, Mr. Oshibajo had earlier been mandated by the president to lead the initiative with other governors in the National Economic Council. The NLTP was proposed when the Buhari administration came under pressure to find a lasting solution to the incessant Etsman violence that killed nearly 4,000 people between 2016 and 2018. The plan included programs of rehabilitation of displaced persons in states ravaged by the farmers' herders, violence and development of ranches for nomadic herders in any willing state of the Federation. After months of preliminary consultations and input from affected states, an agreement was reached by state to form a substantive committee that would oversee implementation of the compromise, make NLTP the coordinating institution of all outstanding issues bordering on earth main crisis and coordinate funding for the transformation efforts. In an April 12, 2019, memo to the president, the vice president detailed the agreement to the president and requested approval. He mentioned that the 5 billion naira had been enmarked for the livestock transformation policy, out of which 12 billion naira had already been released for Ruga projects, construction of ranches for Fulani herders along designated grazing routes. The entire 35 billion naira was pulled from ecolo ecological funds of federal and state government. The 12 billion naira was enmarked for emergency Ruga projects in Niger, Zamfara, Kebi, Kogi, Plateau, Taraba, Nasarawa, Benue, Kaduna, Kastina, Adamawa. The states were designated frontline states affected by the farmers' elders' crisis. Subsequently, since 12 billion naira had been enmarked for immediate use, Mr. Oshiba pleaded with Mr. Buhari to release 22 billion naira for the long time implementation of the project, including providing succor for people displaced by the violence in Benue, Plateau, and other states. Mr. Oshiba also stated in the memo. Reference sh slash vp slash nltp slash o2 slash 1 that the 20, that the 22 billion naira would be deposited in a dedicated account with the CBN and all and only withdrawn for specific purposes 
as may be approved by the member states in the proposed steering committee. In the duplication of efforts, but rather than forwarding the vice president's memo to the president for approval, Mr. Kayari had it for more than a month and virtually submitting it to the president on May 16. But before he submitted it, the chief of staff reworked the memo to include his own observation and recommendation to the president. Mr. Kayari told the president that the request by Mr. Shibadio should be rejected before the 12 billion naira voted for the Ruga project had not be fully utilized. Given that the president has approved 12 billion naira for intervention for the Ruga model through the National Food Security Council, we respectively recommend that we first evaluate the development impact of this particular project before released further amount for the NLTB. Mr. Kayari wrote, this is key, especially as major security operations are ongoing in some of these locations. On Mr. Oshibaji's request for an inclusive steering committee to be inaugurated to drive the livestock transformation policy, Mr. Kayari knocked heat as a duplication of efforts. This plan may not be an effective strategy due to the overriding importance of farmers' health issues in the National Food Security Council, which Mr. President is the chairman, he said. The chief of staff then proceeded to recommend that Mr. Buhari should scrap the NLTP, an initiative by state governors and the vice president as a representative of the administration. To avoid duplication of efforts, we respectively recommend that Mr. President retain oversight of the farmers heard us issue under the NFSC, Mr. Kayari said, adding that the council includes all heads of security and intelligence agencies as well as representatives of governors from the sixth geopolitical zone. Finally, Mr. Kayari proposed the establishment of a national livestock and fisheries commission that would be responsible for formulating, implementation, for formulating, implementing, monitoring, and evaluating all projects related to ranching, fishery, and other related issues. On May 24, the president approved Mr. Kayari's request, consequently discarding Mr. Oshibaji's request. Your recommendation above endorsed, Mr. Buhari said when he signed the memo with reference number PRES-65-HI-COS-2-996. In approving Mr. Kayari's recommendation over Mr. Oshibaji's, even without consulting with his deputy, Mr. Buhari appeared to have more respect for his aides. Presidency sources told Premium Times there was no basis for the president's action, which is just one of several acts of insubordination against the vice president. Mr. Oshibajo addressed the memo directly to the president, and it is unclear why the chief of staff had to sit on it and eventually rubbishing the content before passing it to the president. It is not for the chief of staff to advise the president on a memo that came directly from the vice president. An official told Premium Times under street anonymity to avoid being victimized for discussing confidential state house matters. The vice president issued the memo based on a policy he had been personally supervising. The official said, so there is no basis, especially in writing that it should be subjected to the advice of a subordinate. The official said it was not uncommon for the president to call his chief of staff or other aides to seek verbal advice on an action he wanted to take over a request from the vice president. But he would then have to force revert to the vice president for further briefing and suggestion on areas that need improvement. Another official told Premium Times for Mr. Kayari to, took the step to retain powers for himself by proxy if the approval sought by Mr. Oshibajo had been granted. 
matters around the farmers' health crisis would have been joint federal state concerns and issues would have to be vigorously debated before funding is enmarked. He knows that if the president is in charge, he will be the one issuing orders over the livestock matters in the president's name. The source said that would include spending monies without any request or accountability unlike what would have happened if the steering committee had been approved. Mr. Buhari abruptly suspended the Ruga project in July following an outcry from Nigerians that the establishment of Ruga settlement should be voluntary among states and not imposed by the federal government through the takeover of state lands. Presidential spokesperson Femi Adeshino and Gabashewu did not return multiple requests for comment from Premium Times for the story. The Premium Times obtained the memos as Mr. Buhari was em embarking on a private two weeks visit to the United Kingdom. The President did not hand over power to Mr. Oshibajo. Instead, he has been asking his aides to bring crucial documents to him for assent in London. The Nigerian law requires that the President hand over power if it would be away from July from duty for 21 days. On Monday, Mr. Kayari flew to London to submit a new bill on offshore oil field to the President for assent. The action, the action drew sparked among Nigerians who said it was embarrassing that the presidency would make a public show of such controversial action. One of the acute dangers of the executive presidency in the third world is that it gives too much power to whoever the president chooses, said political analyst Shola Olubanjo. If the president gives you attention, you become powerful, he said. Even if you are a cook or cleaner, you will be controlling the vice president and the ministers without anyone questioning you. Mr. Olubajo said under the ideal situation, especially in advanced society, the vice president would resign his position immediately for what Mr. Kayari did. It was a clear case of insubordination and it also showed that the vice president does not have the president he is. Mr. Oluban just said, but a seat of power is a jungle here and those in power are only looking to perpetrate themselves in office, even under very humiliating circumstances. Hmm. This is so serious, my viewers, today. So what do you think about this news? What is your own take about the issue of Oshibaju, Buhari, and uh, Abakayari? So guys, kindly drop your comments below, click on the subscription button, and also press the bell icon to get updates whenever I upload videos. Bye.